Okay, I just had to open with that. It's uh, me, Geeky Fan GRL, and if you watched um, my Evil Queen review, you'll understand why I had to do that little self-indulgent opening. Uh, anyway, right now we are doing the review for the Disney Villain Designer Collection Maleficent doll. I actually got her first, but I had just got the Evil Queen uh, last night, so I kind of wanted to show her off. And this one is in the box, like I said, because I already had um, viewed it earlier. But we're just going to take a little look-see at her in the box for a second. Show you all the little uh, details of the packaging and such. And then we're going to get to the good part where we take her out. So we got her little nameplate right there, Maleficent. And she is the mistress of all evil. You know, so... It's got to be a busy job. And she looks great. Um, the doll is um, not in any kind of damaged condition, no paint blobs. I know somebody left a comment and basically told me, you know, everything that possibly could go wrong with getting a doll. But um, she looks pretty great. Like I said, I guess I've been lucky to not... Um, so far, knock on wood, if I had a free hand, uh, get one that is bad or looks too bad. She's got a little scratch right there. You can't really see it on the camera. But um, that's really the only thing that stood out to me as, you know, a flaw in terms of that. So I am going to uh, take her out. I'll just give you one last hand down before I take her out and she looks great so this could take a second because last time it it took a couple seconds so I'll be right back Okay, and here she is, Maleficent, in all her uh, glory. She's got her staff, and she's got her leather, and I think somebody said that that little jewel there is supposed to represent her ring that she, you know, the big ring that she has on in the movie. So that is pretty cool. Again, not really anything that stands out to me as, you know, damage from being sent. Except for that little, I don't know if you can see it. Again, sorry for the shaky camera. Except for right there, that little thing. Again, it all seems to be that. Like, all the damages are just little things in the background of it. So anyway, on to the good part. We're going to start in... Um, extreme close-up of her face and take a good look at her eye makeup. She has uh, purple eyebrows, which are pretty cool. And she has this beautiful green pallor to her skin. And her eye makeup is in shades of green, but it's very sparkly. Uh, we got the dark green, um, kind of a light pearly green, if you can see. And then in the crease is um, an even darker, like, forest green. She has uh, yellow eyes, which are kind of cool. Again, like probably speaking to the fact that she turns into a dragon, so, you know, kind of a wink to that. And she has um, these lovely purple lips, more purple than the, the evil queen who had kind of a, a crimson lip color. Okay, um, and then I'm going to move to something that I really liked about it is the incorporation of her horns here as part of her hairdo. And as you can see, her hair is relatively coarse. And the horns, um, they're very hard. They're a little malleable, 
but I don't want to move them too much. But the hair itself, up here it's very silky, and down here it's, it's a little coarser, if you can see. And then we see the angle in her face. I think she has a little more um, cheekbone definition than the queen. And her nose isn't as upturned, in my opinion, as the queen's. You know, because the queen is very snotty because she thinks she's the fairest. Well, Maleficent is just like, I'm evil. Deal with it. And then we move up to her collar. She ha doesn't have any earrings, if you notice. Move up to her collar. And her collar, unlike the evil queen, is quite soft. Which is just like, same fabric, same color, and same softness as her cape here. Let me zoom in. You know, very nice, fine detail here. And then the crushed velvet cape. Much like the Evil Queens, except for what I was talking about last time, that she has that little cutout in her back. And the cape goes, goes out and ends in this kind of, what I like to think of as almost like tentacles, you know, which is very menacing. And then going upward, she has this little satin piece in her dress can see that and you can see how they mimic you know the same color and the same texture and her dress is this very nice crushed black velvet just like her cape and we're gonna look at her bustier now supposedly the gentleman who designed this said that he wanted to kind of do an homage to the scales because she turns into a dragon but even though this has like it's I'm sure it's not real leather it's pleather um, it doesn't really have a, like a pebbled kind of leather. It's more just like a smooth with a little bit of the leather-like texture. Let me go closer in so you can see. Again, sorry, I got to hold this up and point at things at the same time. And this is upturned on her corset. I don't know if it's like an homage to her horns or maybe it's just how mine came. I'm not sure. And then her gloves here are made of the same lacy material, and I think they're attached. Sorry for that close-up of my hand there, but I'm not super sure. And it's more of like a fine, fine, um, like a netting, like a fishnet. It's not like super lacy. So again, more kind of speaking to her uh, edginess. Okay, get you a good close-up there. And then we're going to, um, it goes down here. It scales down, I'm guessing, you know, more homage to the dragon-ness. And then we're going to get to one of the coolest things, I think, is um, her awesome staff that she's got here. She's not quite as blinged out as the queen's belt but it is still awesome and what i didn't notice in other reviews is that this is actually encased in plastic it's not just like the silver ball by itself so it really i don't know if you can see that here but yeah if you can you can kind of see to the side but it really does look like a crystal ball so i thought that was definitely cool she has her um claw features here and you can see all the gems that are kind of inlaid in her staff. And the bird-like um, little speckles here. It's pretty great. And then there's another claw coming around here. So, And I love the talons. They look very deadly. Just like her. She is... Um, Posable to a point like you can move her arm um, her hand and you can move her elbow Let me focus that in up and down like that like if you want her to like hold back her cape or put her arm down and such um, So you can kind of do that. Um, I did find out from somebody somebody commented on my last video that they do come with a stand so for all of you people you know who wanted to take them out and you know, display them out of the box or, you know, 
what have you, you can do that. So that is super exciting. I'm really happy about that. And then we've got the same thing, you know, this Maleficent plate um, with the detail, the, you know, the plastic with the raised damask pattern. And I think I have covered everything. I think that was less rambly than my last review. I I was kind of surprised to be done that fast. Um, let me give you another little close-up on her brooch, which is kind of like a teal color. Let me see if I can focus in. And it's not letting me. Okay. Well, you'll just have to take my word for it then. And that is my review of the Disney Villains Designer Collection Maleficent doll. And I'll give you another little Vanna White spin of the doll as I'm going. Again, I appreciate all, you know, the comments, the likes, everything. It means a lot to me. And uh, if you comment me, um, you should get a response within like 24 hours. I'm pretty good, you know, at keeping up with questions, comments, as long as they're good comments. No, I'm just kidding. But I hope you like this review, and I hope uh, it will inspire you to get the doll now that you've had kind of a close-up, in-depth look at her. And as always, any more questions?